Welcome back to the Pink Elephant, guys. I am Shanae, and if this is your first time here, thank you so much for joining me. And if you're back again, thank you so much for being back. It's fun over here, all right? So anyone who is new, because um, I feel like I gained a lot of new followers after the Pink Soiree. I made a lot of connections from the Pink Soiree. So shout out to you, and welcome to the herd. All right, we're going to jump right in because we have a lot to talk about. Um, it is the second half. Okay, it's the second half. So everything that happened in that first half, that's fine. That's great. But we are now in the second half and we're going to finish strong. Okay, so we are in June. Um, and so I want to talk about a lot of things today. i got to catch you guys up. I feel like I, I owe you guys some 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 intimate conversation and we're going to have it today. But before we get started, we're going to talk about the elephant in the room, which is my decor okay as you can see i have updated quite a bit i have added some things to this space and it feels so good and it's starting to come together so i'm going to show you guys the details of my new additions to this space and then we'll talk more about some of the specifics so let's do that real quick all right so let's get into this decor all right so you guys know i've had this theme is very eclectic and i really wanted to create the space that just says creativity so when i saw these decals at dollar tree i had to have them they look so good on the black wallpaper that i have and they look really really good with my curtains um, I've already had some of these pictures for a while. I grabbed some from Target, the one with the, looks like a cheetah with sunglasses. That's one of my favorites. Um, I added the mirrors. Then I also picked up some pictures along the way from TJ Maxx, um, again, from Target. At the top, you'll see my little headpiece that I wore when I played Moss in Canada, um, several years ago, and then some other pictures that I've gotten from Ross along the way. The space is just really, really coming together. Um, it looks, that's me in the mirror. <laughs> it looks so good and so vibrant and so bright. So I'm really, really happy with how things are turning out. Um, also, I wanted to show you guys my pillow that I designed. If you look closely on my chair, I have my eclectic Mona Lisa pillow that I added to give my space even more character. Um, and if you kind of look and peek over to the right, you see my desk mats that I created in that same print. So very, very cute. Now, you guys know, um, you've seen this spot a lot of times in my in my videos, but my lip couch has always been there. It's pink, it's bright, it's vibrant. My zebra print rug, again, going back to my floral curtains. I just really, really love this space. It just is so warm and bright. Love it. All right. So as you can see, I have spent so much time <laughs> getting this space together. Um, if you look back on some of my older videos, a lot of what you see today was not there months ago. Um, but first, I want to talk about the decals. So, y'all, I had a little come up. I was in Dollar Tree, minding my own business, and I stumbled upon these decals. These decals are $1.25 each. They have a front. They have a back. They have a little peony that's on the stem that's blooming. And they have some petals and some leaves. And I love this so much. This went really well with my curtains. It goes well with the aesthetic of my room. So when I saw them, immediately my mind went to my office. And I'm so glad that I grabbed them. I even had to go back the next day and grab some more because I was afraid that I wasn't going to have enough. So I grabbed little a few more of these in case I want to use them in other areas in my office. So it's slowly coming together like bit by bit, but I am in love with it. So let's talk about that for a little bit because I always get the question about this space. Um, people always ask like, let me see the whole room. And I'm like, it's not really done yet. So I want to share a little bit more about what I did to create this space. I do feel like everyone deserves a zen den or an office or somewhere just like that can be 
just their own, right? So I want to talk about some of the things that I did, um, as well as three tips that I'll give you to create your space. So first, I want to say, be true to who you are. There are a lot of trends. There are a lot of um, experts on social media. Um, there are a lot of aesthetics that people, you know, you might follow, they have, or they, they like, but if you don't like that, and if that doesn't speak to who you are, don't do it. It's as simple as that. Like, don't do it. Don't try to force yourself to be excited about something that you're just not excited about. So for me, I remember an era where I was into neutrals. I was into, um, just a minimalist, right? And that was fine, but I feel like I may have been a minimalist because that's what I saw around me all the time, as opposed to that's who I really was. And this was several years ago, but I remember vividly being surrounded by content that was all about minimal, um, minimalist and minimal color and just very, you know, basic earth tones, which is nothing wrong with that. But in this era and in this season of my life, I am excited about color. I'm excited about pattern. I'm excited about uniqueness. I'm excited about um, texture. So all those things have to be in this space in order for me to feel really, really good about it. So don't get tied up into what trends you see on social media or what your friends do or what you know your mom said you should do or the rules, quote unquote, that you've heard about design. It's your space. It's yours. So for me, that means that you can do anything you want because it's yours and yours only. So be true to who you are. All right. Let's talk about the next tip. The next tip is probably the hardest tip of all um, is be patient. It's taken me a long time, y'all, to find each and every single piece to go in here. I made some of the pieces and then the others I found in different stores. I even had some custom pieces made. But it takes time to really get the space how you want it, right? So you got to be patient. Every time you go in a store, look at the home goods area, look in the kids area, look in different departments so that you can have inspiration or you might stumble upon something that you weren't really looking for, such as these decals that I stumbled upon in Dollar Tree. You got to like, Always look for opportunities to add more to your space without being so pressed about it. Um, if you're not going to be like living in this space or showing anybody on, on social media, you shouldn't feel like a certain rush to do it. It could be like a slow progress or progression over time. And um, after a while, you'll get it exactly how you want. And if you're anything like me, there's no such thing as ever being done. You always add or take away as time goes on, right? So don't feel like you have to, have to, have to have everything done right away. First of all, it costs money to de decorate. And then secondly, it costs time. And if you need someone to hang something up, or if you, let's say, um, just don't have the money right, right away, it might take time. It might take time. The last point and the last thing that I will advise you is don't be afraid to pivot. If you buy something and you get it home and it doesn't quite work, that is okay. Like, I want to give you, like, take all the pressure off of you. It's okay. You can definitely pivot to something new or you can use that, use that item that you bought in a different space. There are so many times that I get something home and it sits forever before I really use it. I'm not advising you to do that, but I'm letting you know that that's only human. It might look like this spot, this space in here is just like so professionally done. But at the same time, y'all, I am not a professional decorator. I just know what I like. And then I try to listen to myself when something moves me and when it speaks to me or have an open mind to what else it could do, right? So these decals, like I said, I was afraid that I wasn't going to have enough of them. So I went back to Dollar Tree to get them. So because I have extras, my mind is thinking about what other ways could I use these? Are there any other spaces in my home that I would use them in? Can, can I add them to more another area in this office? So you just have to have an open mind um, and you got to be able to go with the flow. So don't be afraid to pivot. Don't be afraid to take things back to the store. I know that's like a thing for us. You can take it back. 
Okay. As long as they're willing to, to like accept it back, take it back to the store. All right. So if you are interested in talking to me one-on-one about my process for creating a space, or if you need advice about how to get started, I have several different consultation services on my website that you can use. Just click, um, get on my calendar, set up some time to talk to me about what I did, what worked for me. If you need me to kind of like give you some ideas, I can do that. Um, Just think of me as your best friend, okay? Your best friend that loves to um, decorate. So jump on my calendar. You can go on my website, thepinkelephantbyshanae.com to get on my calendar. Um, It's 30 minutes and it's a small fee, y'all. So let's do that if you are interested. All right, so we're going to shift gears now and we're going to get into something that is a hot topic. So let's shift gears. First of all, I want to make sure I'm not alone. Have you guys ever prayed for something so, so hard you wanted something so, so bad and you get it. And then you'd be like, "Mm, this ain't really what I thought it was. All right. Well, if you have not done that, I'm happy for you because it's nothing like thinking you want something and then you get it. And then you don't, you realize you really don't want it. And you asking God to like, please take it back, take it back, take it back. So let me, let me start. Let me, let's backtrack a little bit. So in 2021, that is during COVID, all right, during COVID, I had my, I had my son in July in 2021 and there was an opportunity for me to apply to a company, um, at the time. So I was on maternity leave, my son, I had him in July, I'm on maternity leave, I'm, you know, doing all the things, nursing and, and, you know, being at home with the baby. And then I see a job posting available and um, or a position available in the job posting on LinkedIn. So I see the job and I realize, wow, this is an opportunity for me to go into big pharma. I really want to be in big pharma because at the time I was in a company that was a startup, great company and meaningful work, meaningful work. But I just didn't feel like I was being valued um, for for my work for my talents and my gifts and what I brought to the table. After all, I was the um, field reimbursement manager for the number one um, region, okay? And I just felt like I wasn't getting awarded what I felt like I should be awarded for my work. So it led me to want to apply for a different job. So when I saw this job, though on maternity leave, I applied for it. So. I applied for the job and I got an interview. You guys know in 2021 up until now the job pro- the job uh the job hiring process is such a long process. It's such a long process. Not only do you do a screening with the HR person, but you also have to then talk to the manager. And then when you talk to the manager, then you have a panel interview. And then you have a, after the panel interview, you then you talk to the, the VPs. It's just like on and on and on. So you end up with like three rounds of interviews. So I got an interview with this company and I did the interview. I made it to, um, the second round did that. It was a panel of, I think maybe three people. Um, and I didn't get the job. All right. So I was a little hurt. I'm like, okay, I didn't get the job, man. I really wanted the job. So I reapply. I see another job comes open and they told me they had two different positions open. Um, and so they told me that I could apply for the next one. So I, I applied to the next job immediately after getting um, passed over for that position. I I applied to another position on a different team. (sighs) Did the interview, did the second round of interviews. I think I did maybe the third round of interviews and I did not get the job. Now, at this point, a lot of people would be discouraged and I was, I was definitely discouraged. But at the same time, one thing about me, y'all, when I want something, I'm a go-getter. Like I'm going to go in on what I want. I I am. That's thank God for that trait, but it's also a gift and a curse because you end up learning the hard way. Stick with me. This is, I'm going somewhere. 
So I didn't get the job and I was like, okay, wow, these are three, two different positions at this point, back to back that I've been interviewing for three rounds each and I did not get the job. And so I'm like, God, I really want this job. I want to leave my company. I feel like I'm not making enough money at the time at my, at the company that I was at. I found out that I was the lowest paid person in my position. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay. We'll talk about that. We're going to come back to that. I was the lowest paid person in my position, which created resentment, right? Because who wants to be the lowest paid person, but you're doing a lot of work. Okay. It's disheartening. So I get a call um, from a young lady who worked at the company and she was like, Hey, it's a position that's opening up. I know you've done two interviews, but I really think that you should apply for this job. I think it's going to be a really good fit. As a matter of fact, it's in South Carolina. It'll be perfect for you. And I'm like, uh, I'm so fatigued out. I, I just feel like I'm disappointed. I just, you know, so much. And she was like, you know, don't worry, just apply. It'll be all right. I apply for the job. I get the interview. I do my second panel interview and then and it's light. It's, it's very light because at this point I've met all the managers. I've done all the screenings I've done. So y'all got to remember now at this point, I've done six different interviews for two different jobs. And now it's a third position. And now I'm having to go through the process again. And it's a lighter. I will give them credit that they didn't make me go through all the turmoil of the interviewing process, but nevertheless, I'm still a candidate at this point. Huh? <sighs> Now, I want to stop right there, and I want to point out the fact that if you didn't realize it, because I know I didn't realize it at the time, I was trying to make something fit. I had already gotten two no's, and I still wanted it so bad. One, because it was a big far, it was big pharma. Two, because I knew I was going to make the most money I've ever made in my life. And three, it would allow me to be able to say that I have been in a position that is above all okay it was a position that if i can do this i can do any other job and i knew that by having that on my resume i could go anywhere in the industry and be paid top dollar for my work so the reasons why let's go back to the reasons why i wanted the job big pharma more uh, visibility and more money so those are the three reasons that i wanted to be in this position um so I get the job. Okay. Long story short, I get the job. Um, this job comes with the company car. Of course you have a company credit card. Of course you're traveling. Um, and that's no different than anything I already had in, in my other positions. I did have a car, um, allowance and I did travel and I did have a company credit card, but in this role, it was such a prestigious company and to have a company car and to be able to, um, travel, but do light travel because my territory was all in South Carolina, as opposed to before I was in Georgia, I was in, I would fly to Atlanta every week. I was living out of a suitcase, um, years ago. So this position would not require that of me. And yet I would be getting paid. I, when I went from the other job to this new job, my pay increase had to be easily over $40,000 probably more than that. I would say mm, probably about $60,000. Yeah. It's like that. It was like that. Um, so, I mean, I always had a goal to make money. Um, but I never knew how much money I could make. Right. And so when I found out what I would be making and I asked for what I wanted and they were like, okay, they gave it to me. I was like, wow, this is amazing. Uh, great. Amazing, amazing, amazing. I cannot believe it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much. Not knowing all the while God is like, oh, okay, you're welcome. But he's thinking to himself, like, Shanae, I'm going to put you here because you asked me to, and you keep forcing it. But you're going to, you're going to find out really quickly that that's not where you need to be. And God is right. <laughs> So I got into the company and, you know, I'm coming from a company where I was number one and I felt like I flourished. I did such a great job in my previous role. There is no way I'm not going to do, do well in this company. There's no way I'm not going to do well in this role. It's just no way. 
only to get over there and to be the most depressed I've ever... I have never felt uh, depression like I felt at this job. I never had anxiety. Um, and if I did, it was manageable, right? And then I get into this role and I have anxiety. I'm not sleeping. Every time that there's a meeting, I'm I'm anxious. I'm nervous. Um, I, I I started to doubt myself. I was like, why am I here? Um, you know, I, I shouldn't be here at this table. Um, there were people on the team who everybody, everybody wanted to be a who's who you get on a meeting and everybody has something to say, even if it's not even anything to contribute, they have to say something. You have to put together a presentation. It was an ambiguous environment. Um, so a lot of days I didn't really have any tasks. I had to create projects. So that was a huge difference in what I'd been doing before. In my previous role, I worked um, at a company that supported um, a rare disease that impacted the African-American community. And it was such a meaningful job to know that me going out and talking to nurses and doctors every day, I was saving someone's life, literally, literally saving someone's life. And they never know me. They'll never meet me. But I definitely had an impact on them getting groundbreaking treatment to make their lives better. And every day I went to work, though I didn't like everything about my job, I knew that I was making an impact because when I went into an office and I helped an office get their get a process developed so that they can help their patients, it was rewarding. Only to switch gears into this new company. So let's keep track. Track with me. I'm making the most money I ever made well over. I mean, I'm well into the, to the six figures. Okay. Just for context, I'm in the six figures. Um, and I'm traveling. I have a company car brand new. Okay. Nothing like a new car smell. Okay. Brand new company car. Um, and I'm meeting different people. I'm in big pharma. I'm having very, very rich conversations. And, you know, I'm amongst all the who's who's. Okay. I'm working with people who've been with the company for over 40 years. And I am sad. I am depressed. I feel like I don't have any value. I feel like I don't have anything to add. I don't know what to add. I don't know if I'm doing a good job. I'm always trying to compete. As a matter of fact, one of the one of the um, the uh, goals was to compete from every seat, and we were already competitive. I didn't feel like we needed to compete any more than what we were, but it was so competitive, and it ended up leading me into a space of just like identity crisis. And I'm like, what am I doing here? And I had to think back, and I was like, but Shanae, you asked God for this. You asked God. For this, because God not only turned you down twice for this job, okay, he he basically told you on a written note that this job wasn't for you and you still wanted to do it. So I want to tell you guys that sometimes God allows things to happen for us to to help us learn the hard way. All right. You got to be careful about what you pray for. And you got to be careful about pushing God to, let me put it like this. God wants to protect us. He knows what's best for us. And yet we think that we know what we want and what's best for us more than God does. And that is a very um, dangerous way of thinking because God has already went before us. He's prepared the table for us and he has walked before us. He already knows where we're supposed to be going. And yet we as humans think that we know what's best and we want what we want. So sometimes God gives us exactly what we want just so that we can know and go back to him. Okay, we can know that he is the one and that we can go back to him. So let me jump in a little bit more about this job. Um, I began to start failing at this job. I was working alongside a um, manager who was a black woman and a soror. 
And I couldn't help but feel that she wanted me to fail. Um, I felt like every time I got on a meeting, it was so much condescending tones and I was cut off. It was brashness. It wasn't a space of like, let me mentor you. Let me help you. It was always this feeling of, I want you to fail. Like almost like a person is picking on you because they think that you are inadequate. Okay. And it's, Ironic because she was one of the managers who had interviewed me for one of the earlier roles that I applied for and she did not um, pick me. And so to know that I ended up getting picked by a different manager, I wonder now how that made her feel and if that played a role in her, um, what I felt to be her wanting to prove that I had no business being there. Um, and it, and it really, you guys, like when we talk about trauma and when we talk about, um, experiences in the workplace, I think we sometimes brush past how certain people have it, have the power to influence our um, experiences for the good or for the bad. And, um, I just remember how I felt working with her and my perception of black women as managers was if I wasn't who I was, I would have definitely had a negative experience that would cause me to think differently, differently about women. Okay. But thank God that I am who I am and I have been, I have maturity in my way of thinking because I did not allow that to taint the way that I feel about working with black women. However, it did, caused me to shut down at work. Okay. So I'll say that and I'll just leave it there. I'll leave it there. Um, so I, here I am, I'm in what I think is my dream job. I am making dream money and I am able to afford things that I want. I can pay my bills. I can do everything that I want and need at this point. I'm loving my what the career gave me. However, I'm so miserable. I talked about this before about finding your passion, but I never talked about how I got to that point. So in my space of being confused and sad and just feeling lost in the job, I, I will always remember and thank one manager in particular who happened to be a white woman at this company. I told her how I was kind of feeling and I just kind of felt like I was kind of just not making it. I'm not doing as well as I wanted to do. And she told me that I should consider going to the career lab at work. So I set up an appointment. I went to the career lab and I ended up being paired with a black woman, a career advisor that was a black woman. Shout out to her. Okay. I won't even put her name out there because she's that good. And I don't even know if she wants to be promoted like that. But when I got in, when I, when I got connected with her, I was so honest. Okay. I had nothing to lose. I'm, I'm depressed. I, I'm anxious. I'm now taking medication at this point to help with the anxiety that I'm experiencing at work. I'm not sleeping. Okay. I'm not getting any sleep. I'm having dreams about work. Anytime you start dreaming about work, it's time to, 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 to reevaluate that job. Okay. That's a free advice. If you are taking your job home with you at night, you need to reevaluate the job. There is no job on this earth that is worth losing sleep over. There is no job. I'm sorry. It's not. So I was losing sleep. I was having nightmares about some of the managers that I was working with. I was having um, anxiety about whether or not I was able to, you know, is, am I good enough? Am I, did I do good on a meeting? Like thinking of things to say on a meeting just because everybody else had something to add, even though it wasn't anything valuable, but they just had to add something. So I'm like, okay, God, please help me get something to add. It was a lot. Okay. So I, uh, I started talking to the career lab, um, the career lab advisor. And she was like, Shanae, you should take an assessment. So I take an assessment and you guys have heard me talk about this before. It's called the Enneagram assessment. This assessment is a great assessment for those who would like to know more about themselves in terms of 
what you do well versus things you struggle at, your personality, um, things that stem back to your childhood, things that make you who you are. I forgot to light my candle. I'm gonna light my candle. So this assessment really helped out because it was it allowed me to see my gifts and my talents, um, as well as things that in, um, prevented me from being the best version of myself. And I'll never forget how groundbreaking this assessment was into who I am today. Because you guys are seeing me as Shanae in 2024. But back then in 2021, maybe 22, I was lost, super lost, okay? Um, so I would, I would like to advise anyone who is really trying to figure out who they are and gain some traction, gain some understanding of all the things that make you you and what you want to do with your life. You need to take some self-assessments. All right. So anyway, take the self-assessment and I realized my strengths and my weaknesses. Um, and then I realized like, I'm not happy here. I am not happy in this job. I don't feel like myself. I don't feel like I can be myself. I don't feel like my ideas are being heard. I feel like I'm, I cannot bring any ideas to the table. Um, and I felt like I was being ridiculed for things that I didn't know. Now, I think the other thing that bothered me is that people think that not knowing things is a bad thing. However, you should be able to say, I don't know, but can I learn and how can I learn openly? And if you're not able to say that where you're, where you work, then is that really a place that you want to grow in? Because I go to jobs to grow. If I don't have an opportunity to grow, I'm not looking to go into that position. And the fact that I didn't have an opportunity to be open and candid about the things I didn't know and have the ability to grow there, that was daunting. That was daunting. So imagine someone asking you to be a perfectionist and be a scholar in an area that you've never really been in. And you have to learn so much stuff at one time. And the person that's asking you to do that, they don't even have to know any of those things. They just have to lead conversations. They don't have to know anything. So it wasn't the most ideal situation. And so when I found out that I wasn't passionate about the job, my life changed. My life changed. So the prayer that I had that God, give me this job, give me this job, Lord, please. I really want this opportunity, Lord. I feel like I'm not valuable at not being valuable or paid what I wanted at this last, at this other company, though I feel fulfilled at the money, God, the money. And he lets me do it only for me to get in and see that you can have all the money in the world. But if you don't have your peace, if you feel like somebody's out to get you, if you feel like nothing that you do is good enough, the money doesn't matter. The money doesn't matter at all. So I stayed with this company for about two, two years and five months, about two years and five months. And my hope was that it would get better over time. But while I worked, I found things that made me happy, which was talking, my podcast, social media, fashion. Um, I found ways to connect with other women um, while working this job. So the, so the thing that I learned by going to the career counselor is that have your job, but also have something meaningful outside of work that you can do and make you feel good. It just so happened that when I got involved in doing things that made me feel good, I realized that was where my passion lied. My passion lied in helping other people realize who they are. My passion lied in helping other moms um, and professional women walk into spaces and feel bold and beautiful and authentic and, and feel confident because I lacked those things so long in my career. Now you talking about, so I started in this career, um, in this career space in 2013. Okay. And so I, up until this point, I had been working in this same space in corporate America for over 10 years. And it's been a battle being a black woman, um, being, uh, uh, what, what word do I want to say? Um, passionate about my work, um, being a goal getter, a goal getter, um, 
a, a go getter and being um, goal driven, all those things. Right. It was it was hard. <laughs> it wasn't easy to be able to do those things and then to get to that level in my career. And then you get to that level in your career only to realize it's nowhere you want to be. It's nowhere you want to be. <sighs> I had to take a deep breath because I'm thinking about people who think that money is going to be the solution. And I'm going to be honest, money is great. Money can solve a lot of problems when it comes to things that you have to pay for. But what I've learned is that money is good, but money isn't good if it if you have to compromise on your peace. And let me say that again. Money isn't valuable to me if I have to compromise my peace for it. And I want to I want to bring it into context a little bit. So, I'm even though I'm making well in the six figures, more money than I've ever made before, I can travel, I can buy, I can take care of my family, I can we can pay our bills, we can put money aside credit, all the things, but yet I felt so miserable. I felt depressed. I felt like I didn't know who I was. I felt like I was inadequate. I felt like I didn't belong. I felt like I was always being challenged. Um, I felt like I was, um, you know, someone was going to get me at any point. I had imposter syndrome. I, um, I started having nightmares about different people that I worked with. Um, I always felt lost. I always questioned whether I was good enough, whether I was doing enough. No amount of money is worth that. No amount of money is worth that. And one thing that I've learned, you guys, is that money can be made. It doesn't matter if you like co collecting stones, okay? I'm talking about literally rocks. If you like collecting rocks, if you love it so much so down to your core that you believe in collecting rocks, I guarantee you, you'll find a way to make money doing it. All you need is to connect with the right people who can help you think business minded, have a business mindset, how to invest your money, how to how to live a certain way. You'll make money collecting rocks. OK, but what you cannot do is make money at a company and be miserable and still be healthy and be OK. You can have all the money in the world, but if you don't have your peace. You don't have anything. And I knew I'd gotten to that point when I said, God, you can take everything. You can take this job back. You can have this car. God, you can, I don't have to travel anymore. God, if you would just give me peace, I would be thankful. And I remember the day like yesterday, because I was talking to my therapist and I was just like, I had the aha moment. I had an epiphany that I don't want to be here. I don't, I don't like being in this space that I'm in. I don't like feeling how I feel. I don't like waking up every day and having anxiety about meetings. I don't like questioning whether or not I'm good enough. I don't like questioning whether or not I'm supposed to be here. I don't like it. So if, if that means I have to give everything back so that I can feel whole and feel myself again, I'll do it in a heartbeat because it's not worth my peace. It's not worth my peace. So I would challenge you guys to think about whether or not you're staying in a place because it feels good and what we like to call in my industry, the golden handcuffs, meaning it's, it's, it's got you locked up, but you, it's, it's just so, so good. It's so good. You can't let go of it. You'd rather be in jail, you know, um, quote unquote in jail, then um, let go of all the amenities and all the benefits that you get. It, it holds you hostage, knowing that you make money, knowing that you travel, know that you have a company credit card, know that you have a company car. Those things keep you in bondage because you feel like you can't do, get those things anywhere else. But I want to like give you guys a little bit of peace of mind. God is so good. God is so intentional. 
every single thing that he does for you and will do for you is going to be to your benefit. You don't have to feel handcuffed to any job. You don't have to feel like there's no other way you're going to make money because the God that gave you that job is the same God that will give you another job, the same God that will help you find your passion, the same God that will help you realize your potential. God would not have us live a life that makes us stressed out. God would not have us live on this earth and feel miserable. He doesn't want that for us. And then I couldn't help but think, like, if I just had been obedient, when God said no to that position, not once, but twice, if I had just been obedient and said, you know what, I'm going to stay put until it's time for me to move, I would have I would have been able to bypass this point in my life where I felt my lowest. But God is also so gracious that even in the midst of me being disobedient and me asking for something that he did not want for me and him giving it to me, God gave me different people in my lives, the career counselor, that manager who led me to the career counselor, money to be able to afford to buy things that I needed and go places that I wanted to go and see things that I wanted to see, invest in my education, um, meet different people in the process of being at this company. God is so great that he was he he knew that I needed those things for this next era of my life that I'm going into. And so as I walk into this second half of my life, I'm walking in with lessons about understanding the value of myself versus the value of money. I'm learning I'm walking in with more connections with people. I'm walking in with more knowledge about um really who I am and what I want. I'm also walking in with more confidence. And not only that, I'm walking in with a brand, The Pink Elephant by Shanae. I would have never developed this brand if it wasn't for me going to the career lab. And I know I didn't talk about that part today, but that part is important. After I went to the career lab and I did the assessment, I began to think about my passion and what I like to do, and that was talking to people the pink elephant was born. And had I not gone through all the things that I'd gone through and been depressed and started having anxiety and then led to the career lab, I never would have had the opportunity to do that self-assessment to find out what am I really passionate about? What do I really want to do? What really gives me energy and brings me joy? And so I thank God that even though I had to go through all those different things, it led me to this place that I am in now. So now let's talk about this next half. <sighs> so as we are now in June, I want to officially announce that I will be a full-time podcaster for The Pink Elephant by Shanae. You can catch this podcast every single week. Um, I will be committing to doing lives where you can join me and we can have some good conversations. I am on a quest to learn how to cook, learn how to make cocktails. Um, I want to learn how to sew. I am in this point in my life where I am going to do everything that brings me joy. Um, and I want you guys to be along for the ride. So please, please, please join me. Um, and the way that you can support me is by watching this podcast, reposting this podcast, sharing the podcast with other people, um, sending in comments and letting me know things you want to talk about. If you want to join me for a conversation, let's do it. Um, all those ways that you can help and you can support me. And last but not least, keep me in your prayers. Keep me lifted up in prayer. Keep me encouraged um, by just showing up here and participating in the conversations. And, you know, guys, I am extremely grateful for this platform and for this season of my life. I don't know what next season holds, but in this season, it is all about the Pink Elephant by Shanae podcast. So I hope you are encouraged. I hope that this resonated with you. If you've never gone through something where like you regret 
what you ask God, that is so good. Make sure that you check in with God and be honest with yourself and be honest and transparent with God about the things that you desire. If God is, if, if you ask God for what you want, he's going to give it to you. So if God was able to give me this job that I know I didn't have no business having, if I really am honest about the things that I really do want and I ask God for them, God's going to do everything that he said he's going to do. So be encouraged, be a pink elephant, okay? Be authentic, take chances and bet on yourself. That's what I have to say. Do all those things and make sure that whatever you do, you do it authentically you. I will talk to you guys later. Be sure to follow me. If you are not following me, you can follow me on Instagram and on TikTok at the pink elephant underscore by Shanae. You can follow me on Facebook at Shanae Pringle. And if you want to connect and if you want to stay connected, go to my website, the pink elephant by Shanae.com and subscribe to our newsletters that will be going out later this year. Until then, I will talk to you later. Bye, y'all. <music>